guys doing? You alright? I can't get this perfect, but that will have to do. So this is a continuation from the live streams, the live streams that I've started over the last few days. And uh, we, we, could, we were doing these in 2.19, but obviously we got interrupted um, with the COVID, but that's in, that's in the past. So one of you asked me a question yesterday, Eddie from Ireland. I love the question. I've been thinking about it all day, Eddie. And you asked me, uh, how, how do you get motivated to face your social anxiety? So. Um, I'm going to do a live stream today and we're going to go into this and you guys can ask me other questions as well It doesn't have to be on Social anxiety, but it would be good if we could stay on the topic, but we don't have to just stay on the topic. So Appreciate all you guys coming on I'm really excited about these live streams because I've got a big goal to build them up and um, on, 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 on many levels my goal is for you to watch my um, live streaming video, get so motivated that you say to yourself, right, I've had enough, I've had enough now of my anxiety, my fears, and go out and start facing your fears. As easy as, easy as it sounds, it is easy once you fully commit to doing it, but it's not that easy emotionally. That's why I've titled this video, Social Anxiety Q&A getting comfortable with being uncomfortable because that is the practice that you've got to do hundreds of thousands of times if you want to change your life. I'm presuming that you guys do. So we'll, we'll get into that. So most of today is about the motivation side because Eddie's right from Ireland. Motivation is so important. Anybody that says that motivation isn't important, I, I, I don't agree on them. I don't think they understand what they're saying. Because if you don't have the motivation, then you're not going to take action. You're not going to go out and face your social anxiety. But the question you're probably asking me is, how do I get motivated to face something that I'm afraid to face? And quite frankly, that I don't want to face. Well, we're going to get into that in this live stream today. How have you guys been? I'll tell you what my days look like today. I got up today, um, got up, I went to the gym. I didn't feel like it too much. I usually always love my workouts. I love working out. I did it anyway. I did a chest workout, a bit of arms, come out of the gym. Uh, I went home, showered obviously. I came out and uh, I did some, I filmed some YouTube videos. I wasn't happy with how they came out because uh, I, I, I had a big bushy beard and it kind of, I thought, nah. So I, I love doing this, doing things, failing and thinking I want to make that better. So I went and got my beard trimmed and I'm going to remake those videos tomorrow uh, and doing this live stream today. So uh, I've had a great day today. Um, it has been, um, it's been eventful. So that's my day anyway, guys. And I went and, um, went and got my beard trimmed found a hairdresser's and I, I like the geezer that done it he was um you know he was old school he was a, he was an alpha male he was a gentleman and um it brings back memories of when I was a kid you know because you know, we're living in different times now but I remember back in the day when how can I say it you know when men were men when men were strong and, and, and I'm not I'm not assuming I'm not saying you've got to be a um like aggressive or anything like that. No, but men, men were kind, but they were strong men. Where today, I'm not the only one who's noticed that there seems to be a shortage of men that are, are strong, hence why men are struggling to face their fears and they need other strong men to encourage them and motivate them. Anyway, went on a bit of a tangent there. That's, that's what happened. I know that a lot of people watch these live streams later on, so it's okay if some people, they don't make the live stream live because it still goes up on my YouTube channel as a video anyway. So I have to remind myself that to just treat this as, it's live, yes, and it's great to interact with you live and get your questions in, but it's also a YouTube video as well. Let me just get myself comfortable. I'm gonna get myself soon, guys. I've got to invest in a stand so I can put my phone neater so it's not as angled. So I'm just trying to get my um, 
I've twisted my, I've injured my neck a bit today on, on bench, never mind. Um, I'll give it a few minutes and I'm, I'm going to get into the, to the teaching. I love this topic, by the way. It's one of my favorite topics. All right, let's get some of this coffee. Actually, one thing I want to share today that I've learned today, and I've learned this so many times, but you've got to keep learning these things and expand. I want to share it with you guys. You've got to put your, you've got to change your frame of mind from scared and nervous and not wanting to face things and get uncomfortable to wanting to get uncomfortable, not cowering away, because it's human nature, right? We're, we're all human we're, and we all think very similarly um, but some of us some of us are obviously more determined than others hence why some people have you know face their fear more so you, you've got to you've got to choose mentally to put your, your your mind frame in a frame of mind where you're not you're not how can I explain it it's hard to explain this on a bloody on a bloody live stream without being in person you've got to get out of that way of thinking that oh I don't want to get hurt, I want to protect myself, I don't want to be uncomfortable. You know, you, you, you've got to change that and you've actually got to toughen your, your mentality up and, and, and face these things and keep facing it. And, and then you get used to it, then you grow into it. Or maybe you never fully get used to it, but you just accept it, you get comfortable being uncomfortable. So there's two ways that you can choose to live. The first is in, is in a comfort zone where you don't go out and face your fears and then you're not happy and then you're not happy with yourself and you've got this low self-esteem all the time. Or you can do it the warrior's way where you you get uncomfortable. You know, you put yourself in situations that are nerve-wracking and you, and you get through them and you get a little bit better each time and then you feel happy later on. So people, people somewhere in their minds tend to think that they, they try and cheat this system and find happiness without getting off their backside. And, you know, that's just not gonna work. I don't care what, you get these people that come up with new ideas and, and it's great to come up with new ideas, but it doesn't work. The way that the human mind works and the psychology and our evolution and our self-esteem and sense of self-worth, we've got to, you've got to earn things, you've got to work hard. Otherwise, you're not gonna feel, like how are you gonna respect yourself and feel that sense of satisfaction and accomplishment if you're not challenging yourself? So this is the mindset you need. I'm gonna let it digest because it does, it takes time for this to sink in. It took me a lot of time. It takes everybody time. And as I said yesterday on the stream, I'm, I'm working on being even more patient with you guys and my clients and people in general and myself because things you don't learn these things you know in an hour um, I mean you can learn it in an hour but it takes a long it takes longer than that to actually implement it and and actually apply it and make it a behavior Can one of you just comment in the chat? I just want to make sure it's working. Hold on a second. Oh, great. I appreciate that, man. Now the questions are working. The main issue is when people take action, they can't take the pain. That's a good point. That's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And that's why... That's why I do the best I can to share my story and teach you what I teach the clients that do the six weeks program and the weekend program, who can get it. So I think, I think initially what happens to people is what happens to me is people are soft, they're weak mentally and emotionally, right? Because they've been for a lot like I did, we all have, and they're vulnerable and we're, we all have vulnerabilities, right? And where they stay sheltered in their comfort zone for so long, when they step outside of their comfort zone, like you just said earlier, uh, and, and they feel that pain, they feel that discomfort, it's so overwhelming and painful 
that they want to get away from it, they don't want to feel it. So they come out of that pain, at that place of growth, and they go back in the comfort zone. And then logic kicks in, logic says, oh, remember how painful that is, you know, remember how embarrassing it was when I went and spoke to a girl and it didn't work out, or when I met that group of people, or when I got awkward, do you remember how painful that was? And you're kind of talking to that negative part, it's like two of you, and you're like, yeah, it was, and it's like, we don't want to face that, and it's, you know, it's the little child in you, we all have a little child, and that's when you start negotiating with yourself in, in a way where you allow yourself to become a coward, basically. So what people have got to do is, if they want to succeed, they've got to say, look, I had a go at it, like you said, it was painful, I feel like I failed, I feel like I couldn't handle it, so I ran back into my comfort zone. But that's okay, you get, listen, let me explain something. No shame in that. The, where, where the problem comes in, if you can't motivate yourself and get your mind right, however you do it, well, you should get a mentor if you can't do it on your own. Go back out again. Can I give you guys an example, a, a real concrete example of how I did that successfully so you can do it? And you, you know what I'm talking about. When I first started amateur boxing, I was, I, I honestly believe this, I was more scared than any, any guy in, in the gym. I mean, that might not be fundamentally true, but that's how I felt. I was terrified to get through, go through those ropes and do the sparring. I could hit the bag, I was always a good puncher, I could train. But when it came to doing the sparring, which is really fighting, it's controlled fighting. The gyms I went in, sparring is fighting. Okay, it's with head guards on, you get hurt. So the first time I got put in, I, they put me in with a guy younger than me, but he was an amateur champion. He was, well, he was fighting, I didn't have any amateur fights. So they put me in with this guy. Um, I tried to knock him out, I couldn't hit him. And he hit me and he dropped me, he put me down and I was embarrassed. He dropped me down, hit me with a shot and it, and, and it fucking hurt my jaw, sorry my language. And I got back up and the, and the trainer went, well, stop, 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 like, and then, you know, and then, and then they stopped it. I came out of the ring and I felt the way most of you probably feel with your anxiety, I felt I'm a failure. And it was such a bad experience to me that I was scared to get back in the ring because I got a beating and I didn't want to feel that pain again. But because I was so determined to succeed and, and improve and I couldn't live, I couldn't live the rest of my life feeling like a coward. So it took me some time. I had to speak to some strong men, my dad, the trainers, I had to get some inspiration and not take it personal. It took me some time, I got back in the ring again. I got beat up again, but I learned a little bit more this time. Then I got back in again, then I got back in again, to eventually, I won a sparring match. And I, I, I got the better of someone else. So that's what you need to do in, in all areas, but today we're talking about in the social aspect. So when you go into an area that's painful and it hurts you, and you feel like you can't face it again, you can do it, but you just need to change your, basically you need to be more prepared for the pain the second time around, because the first time as a beginner, whatever you do when you're facing fear, you're naive, you're not prepared for it. But what I'm trying to say to you guys is, none of this is negative if you keep going. It's only negative if you quit. So people get too caught up on, oh, what if I get awkward with a girl? Listen, I've got awkward in front of girls thousands of times. More than any of you probably, more than all of you put together. I felt so many times, so many times I've got awkward in front of people, every, friends, everyone. But I didn't quit. And for the thousands of times that I was awkward and failed, I've gone into social situations hundreds of times and I've been confident. So that's kind of my story and anyone can do it who sets their mind to it. I know, oh sorry, I know anyone can do it because I've I coach people all the time, I've been doing it for years, and I see it week in, week out. But I'm not getting away from the fact that it is hard, especially at the earlier stages. That's why you need mentors. Um, you, you need a mentor to give you the support. Yeah, I always remember that. I remember coming back on the Bakerloo line. I was living with my nan at the time. And I, I was training down Fitzroy Lodge and I got a beating in sparring by a guy. Uh, he was bigger than me. 
stronger than me and he beat the crap out of me. He busted my nose. He gave me a black eye here. My jaw was hurting. He, he kind of took liberties, to be honest, but I don't complain about it, right? It's a, it's a man's sport. And I was on the train, sitting on the train on my own. I just felt so defeated. I felt so depressed. So I, I looked in the reflection and my face was all marked up. And I just felt like, oh man, I'm, I thought I was better than that. I'm, I thought I was a lot stronger. I remember on the train thinking, logically, I'm probably not made for this. I should quit this. But nah, something in me wouldn't quit. And, uh, and I went back, you know, I've said this story before and I just kept doing it in training and I got better and I got stronger and I listened to the trainers and I got tougher and I got used to adapting to the level of fear, anxiety, adrenaline in the ring. And I remember this guy, I liked him, but it, to be fair, he was a bit of a bully. I think he did enjoy knocking someone around that was weaker, but I got him back. I, got, I liked him, but I got him back. When A few months later, he got him with me and I got the better of him because I'd improved. I caught him, man. <laughs> sound like I'm showing off, but I'm not. I'm just telling you guys truths, how much I've failed, how much I've succeeded. I caught him with a beautiful uppercut, boom. And, and, and uh, you know, and, and he respected it. He said, oh, good shot. So I'm not saying that you've got to go in a boxing ring to become hardened to the pain that you have to experience when you face fear, but I'm just giving you real examples from my life. That's all I really can do. But I really like your point. I'm going to make another video on that. People don't realize as well, right? You guys, well, I'm presuming, you probably look at me and think that it's easy for me. It's not easy for me. I've, I've done, been in these situations hundreds of times and I, I still get, I still have fear. I still feel anxiety and nerves. But the difference is my experience, my mentality, the tools that I've learned, the failure, failure is a big um, help for me in my life because I've got the wisdom from the failure and the success. So, you know, it's something that I've, I work at every day. Anyone can do it, anyone can do it. This is why I'm, this is why I'm saddened that they don't teach this in school. Like, why don't they teach kids and humans, men and women, strategies on how to cope with fear and anxiety because when you go out into the big wide world and you leave school and you leave university you can have to confront this i remember jeff saying the same thing jeff thompson uh my friend and mentor jeff said you know this fear that we feel you you at some point you're gonna have to face it or you're just gonna be completely living in fear and you're gonna be stuck and you're gonna be in in a mental and emotional prison, and nobody wants that. That's why, man, you, you really got to show some love and, and appreciation for all the good mentors out there who really break their back. And I'm not just, like, I'm not bigging myself up, but there's so many. We literally, we give our, we give, you know, we kind of give our soul to help other people. You know, even at the cost of the shit that we go through and the criticism and, you know, how unkind people can be when you're doing good things for them. You know, we, we share blood, sweat and tears and, you know, make no mistake about it. I've had to go through blood, sweat and tears to just to be at this point today, doing this live stream, teaching you, helping you, motivating you, inspiring you. I had to go through hell and back, but has it been worth it? 100% yes. Has it been easy? No, it's not been easy. Was, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. Would I change it? No, I wouldn't change it. I'd do it all over again. Guys, get your questions in. Um, you can you can interrupt me at any, any point. I like answering the questions. But um, yes, great doing these streams. Yeah, well, I think we're, what we're talking about today is, is how can we get past stubborn human nature in the sense of protecting yourself uh, and being in the comfort zone. It's interesting because I've had this conversation before. Everybody's got, everybody's fears are different. For me, the most frightening fear that I've faced among all of them, what are the main, the fighting, boxing and fighting, <laughs> is the scariest fear that I've ever faced in my life. More scary than approaching women in public. That was scary initially, that was terrifying. But 
the, the sparring for me was just, my ego was petrified. I was completely humbled. There's no, there was no cockiness in me, even at, at that point, if there was any. I don't think I'm a cocky person. Maybe I'm a little bit, right? But it's charming. When I, when you go through those ropes, man, it is a humbling experience. So, but doing that has given me a lot of strength. And I try and transfer that, transfer that strength onto uh, you guys or anyone that I can help. What was your question there, James? Come up quick. That's good, I've got a good sense of humor. So a friend from Ireland yesterday. Yeah, I felt uncomfortable in my first YouTube video. 100%, very uncomfortable. I mean, I wasn't frightened like I was when I'd done the boxing sparring and approaching women, but I was very self-conscious and nervous, absolutely. To the point where I could only speak for about a minute and a half um, in front of the camera before freezing up. So I've come a long way. What's up, Corey? Good to see you, mate. I agree, yeah, I agree on that. I agree what you said, that the schools, they don't want to teach too much truth. Um, yeah, I agree on that. But I just want to say this to everyone listening. You've got to be patient with learning this stuff. It doesn't come easy, you've got to earn it. And if it was easy, you know, as my, as my dad always said to me, if it was easy, then everyone would do it. You know, there wouldn't be any value in it. And of course we want everyone to succeed and do it, but what we're saying is, it, it's, not, it's not push of a button. It takes time and effort. Like I said, I got battered when I first started boxing. I got, I got embarrassed, I got humiliated, man. I got beaten up by, you know, kids younger than me. I was 20. And I remember getting, you know, a paste in, in sparring by like a 15 year old, but he was experienced, I wasn't. I was coming from the street. I was coming from, you know, street fights where I'd get bullied. So street was tough, but boxing's different. Getting in with a skilled fighter who can make you miss, make you pay, and there's rules as a referee. But I just kept going, you know, if I listened to fear and, and, and normal human nature, I would have packed it in. And if I would have packed in the boxing, I probably would have packed in other areas of my life and I wouldn't be, you know, doing what I love and coaching people. I think today, man, what, what men need is they, they, you know, they need love and encouragement. They need people to, um, Oh, good to see you, Andy. You're right, mate. Live streams are quite intimidating. Really, Andy, do you, do you know what, right? I can understand how people can feel intimidated. Personally, for me, I, I don't find them intimidating, and I'll tell you why. Um, because I did so many scary things prior to doing these live streams, so it was kind of comfortable. But yeah, first time doing them, it would be nerve-wracking. Um, because you've got to not panic, and you've got to get comfortable and relax and not you know worry about how you're coming across or running out of things to say but it's not as scary as boxing believe me doing a live stream is is a lot easier in, in my opinion than you know getting in the boxing ring and fighting another man or sparring with another person especially when you get in with someone who's better than you it's scary man you know i was i was all i always got nervous because i knew oh this guy is better than me it's more experienced so um you know there's a there's a, some lessons on fear Yeah, that's why you've got to keep throwing yourself, you've got to keep putting yourself in. I'm not saying every day, but I'd say, I mean, when I used to do the amateur boxing, we did it twice a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday and a Friday. Um, I would usually spar, sparring would be once or twice a week. So I had to keep doing it every week because if I missed it, I'd get scared again. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, the, the, the analogies are so similar with social anxiety and all fear really. Fear is all really the same thing. It just, 
it hits you in different ways. So it's about putting yourself in that situation, trying to survive in it. It's a good question. Um, now, nah, for me, boxing was harder, I've got to say. Public speaking was really frightening for me. Um, that's definitely up there. It's close, but I'd have to say that the boxing for me, personally for me, can't speak for everyone. Boxing was harder, boxing was scarier getting in. Because at least with public speaking, you know that no one's gonna, you're not gonna get knocked out or you're not gonna get hurt in that way. You can get embarrassed and get nervous and that's scary, but yeah, I found boxing, I found boxing harder, more scarier. You know, after doing it for so many weeks, I did get used to it. So, you know, you, you do get used to it and then you start to enjoy it. And then you go from a mindset of, you know, being a coward, not wanting to get in the ring or face the fear, wanting to avoid it or get out of doing it, to voluntarily putting your hand up and, and being excited about jumping in. And that's the mindset shift. That's the change that happens when you keep practicing facing your fears. So, being able to control fear is a skill. It's a skill just like, you know, um, being able to be a bricklayer or sing or um, build software. It's a skill that anyone can learn if they're, if they're willing to put the work in. By the way, guys, if you want to practice managing your fear and getting over your social anxiety, I've got, the, I've got a free Phyllis event on the 17th coming up in London. Uh, we meet in a group we go for a coffee in a, in a place or a park, nice place. And we have conversations exactly like this in person. So if you guys fancy coming along, send me an email. My email address is below all my videos. johnnyberber gmail.com. Drop me an email. This is a free event. You can come along. It's life changing. So it's basically an extension of the live streams, but it's in person. And it really is good. Uh, and I know that you're going to be nervous to come down, I appreciate that, but this is the opportunity for you to face that fear and get that confidence and, and get the growth, you know, because that's what you need. You need courage, you need growth, uh, you need confidence, and you need the consistency. That's why I do the six weeks program, because it works. It, f for those six weeks, I, I help the students to build a habit, and the habit is they're facing fear every week facing it facing it getting used to it getting more comfortable with being uncomfortable and then after they finish the six weeks program they've got so much confidence tools and skills that now they're motivated to keep going and keep growing does that make sense so i believe it takes about six weeks to build a solid habit whether that's sparring imagine how confident you guys would be if you did live streams what i'm doing for six weeks in a row you wouldn't, you wouldn't be worse than you are now. You'd be better. Imagine how confident you'd be if you um, practiced public speaking in a row. If you did it every week for six weeks, you'd be a different person. So the question is, why aren't you practicing more? It's because the fear is getting in the way. The fear is stopping you and you're telling yourself that you can't handle it. I'm telling you that you can handle it. And if you break it down, and that's what any good teacher will do. They won't make you do everything in one day. That's too overwhelming. But they'll make you do enough to where it's challenging. But you can do it, grow from it, and then you can do a bit more and more as you go along. But you need goals, you see. Your goal, your drive, your goal, your vision, it needs to be bigger than your fear. If it's not bigger than your fear, then you're not gonna face it. You won't be motivated to face the pain, to get uncomfortable. And these are the things that, you know, people know this, right? You guys know this deep down that what you've gotta work through. You've gotta work through fear, anxiety, um, discomfort, embarrassment, shame. All these uncomfortable emotions and feelings towards yourself, you got to, But when you work through them and break through them, you come out the other side with confidence and feeling good about yourself.
Tämä vai toi vai toi? I gave myself no choice personally. I got to a stage, guys, where I didn't give myself a choice to say, right, are we going to face fear or not? It was like, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're going all out. Uh, and I did that in, in, you know, many, many areas. <clears throat> Any more questions? If you can't face your fears on your own, you should get a mentor. You should invest in my coaching or find a mentor that you trust, you like. Um, because otherwise, you're not going to do it. You're going to stay stuck. And that, that fear motivated me more than any fear. The fear of just being a loser and being stuck or feeling like a loser. And not progressing, not growing and life being the same. That frightened the shit out of me. That made me change my life. So a lot of people don't realize that they want to avoid their fears because it doesn't feel comfortable and it's painful. But in the avoidance of facing fear, you're going to have a slow death, the worst type of pain. Regret, guilt, shame, frustration, depression. Um, that's not, um, that's not any, any better than, you know, the pain of facing fear because that's a positive pain you face the fear it's painful but you grow you feel great after you don't face it because you don't want to face the pain and you get out of the pain and you you feel comfortable but then you feel terrible because you're not challenging yourself Guys, want to add anything to that? Any questions? Sometimes, as well, you got to sit down and really think things through. Uh, it just sent me a voice message there. You really got to sit down and, and really think about, you know, your, your life and and you know the way it is and, and how do you want it and do you want to continue. Um, you know, being the way that you are. So I, I'd rather fail at everything and take action than not fail, but not succeed. Protect yourself because there's, there's no victory in that. There's nothing admirable about that. Anybody can anybody can do nothing, right? Doesn't take any skill or strength. But not everybody can go out and risk it and take a risk and start their own business. Ask women out do public speaking or travel so two options what's it going to be i want you guys to do the second option where you become fearless and your life becomes limitless and you challenge yourself you know it's all part of a growing process people don't like to fail but the ones that succeed like to fail we i love failing so does schwarzenegger so does david goggins so does anthony robbins so does grant cardone so do loads of my clients because we know the value of it we know what it leads to and we also know the consequences that if we don't fail, we don't try and we sit on our ass and we protect ourselves, we ain't going to get shit in life. We're not going to get squat. Sorry, my language is passion, right? It's passion. It's the Irish in me. It's coming out. And it's the coffee as well mixed with the water, right? It's not vodka. This is water. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to keep talking you guys through it because I believe you've got to talk people out of the negative and you've got to talk them in to seeing things in a positive way. And that's part of strengthening your mind. Remember every time you guys are hitting that like button, you're burning calories, so well done. So look, I'm giving you an opportunity, I'll say it again. You've got the free Phyllis event coming up on the 17th. That's an opportunity for you to take action and put all this theory that you're learning and the videos and, and the books that you're reading, let's put it to the test. Because I've said it before, reading books doesn't teach you how to overcome the fear of sparring and boxing. Reading books doesn't teach you how to go out and do public speaking. It doesn't teach you how to ask a woman out. 
it doesn't it doesn't give you those tools the only thing that gives you that is in the arena is taking action and working those courage muscles working your mind your body your heart and your soul you ain't going to do that by reading a book i can read a book on the toilet it's comfortable i can read a book laying down anywhere my business journey's been amazing um, to be honest it's been full of ups and downs and in between and it's the best thing that I ever done becoming an entrepreneur it's a great learning experience and that's why I've started doing business coaching and taking on two new clients because I think it's one of the best things a person can do that wants to excel in their life and especially if you want to make a difference to other people you learn so many skills um, and you can help so many people through business and you can get paid well at the same time. So it hits many different positives. It's unbelievable. And you can't run a business um, unless you're running it online. And even then, you've got, to, you've got to face your fears, you've got to work your courage muscles. So it's been, business has been a great, it's been a great platform and an avenue for me to challenge myself and grow and face my fears and work on my insecurities and help other people. It's amazing. And I've met people from all around the world. And it's brought me into different places that I never believed I could go to. Places that people always told me that I couldn't do it. Anyone can do what I'm doing. Anyone can do this with the right mindset. With the right help and support and the right mentorship, any, any of you could do this. One of my clients at the moment I'm working with, the guy is unbelievable. He did my six weeks program because he wanted to get over his social anxiety at work and around his family. Did that, made a lot of progress. He's traveled all the way. He travels from like outside London, Manchester. We finished the program, he was pleased. Then he said, I've got so much out of it. Can I do another six weeks of you? I said, oh, of course you can. I love working with the guy. He did another six weeks. He said, but this time, can we focus this on dating? Because he had some limiting beliefs about dates. He's gone on four dates, right? And then he said, after that, he said, could you give me any advice on business? I'd like to start my own business and do something like what you're doing, Johnny. I would like to coach people at some point. I said, I've got a six weeks business program. He said, I'd love to do it. Great. Guy doesn't mess around. Signed up. Did that, made a lot of progress. And he's done, signed up for another six weeks. The guy is so determined. He's growing, he's good. He's, he's succeeding. He's turning his life around. Why? Because he's made the investment financially, mentally and emotionally. He's set himself a goal. He's working hard. He's got a great attitude and he's, and he, and he's on his way. Your goal has got to be bigger than your fear. Say that again, you can write that down. Your goal has to be bigger than your fear, otherwise the fear will swallow you up. That's what a lot of people do, they don't find the right goals and they focus on their fears. Most people, a bit, a bit Les Brown kicking in, right? And the Johnny Burb, I love Les Brown. Most people are living their fears, not living their dreams. For the first 15 years of my life, guys, I lived my fears out. That's why I was miserable, depressed, no girlfriend, always broke financially, emotionally, not happy, not challenging myself. I was living my fears. The next 15 years, I decided to change, take action, and I lived my dreams. So I'm trying to help you to do the same. It's not just the mindset, it's a heart set. Yeah, your mind's got to be on the job, but you've got to have the heart for it. Because there's many people who tweet all this stuff, they say it, they do courses, they read books, but they don't take the action. Because their heart, they ain't got the heart for it, they haven't got the character. You have to have it. Um, it's not, it's not. Social anxiety isn't more in men. That's a, that's a false belief. That's miseducation. Um, it's that men find it more difficult to talk about their emotions than women do. That, that's really, that's the answer. But women have social anxiety the same way that men do. I get loads of women that follow my videos, which is great. It's just that men have a problem because of the male ego and what it means to be a man or what people understand. But that's changing, isn't it? Things are changing in society for the better in that regard. People are speaking up more. I've spoken up about my issues, how I've dealt with them, 
to help other people. Many people are. So, you know, you guys can't... You've got to take responsibility as well. You can't just... I mean, if you just say, well, it's society's fault, then you're not going to change because there's always going to be something to blame in society and there's certain things that I don't agree on. But you got to change. Society's not going to change you and it's not going to get her to. You've got to climb outside the boxes, uh, the limited boxes that you've created for yourself of your own thinking and your own actions. Otherwise, you're not going to change. It's not really that hard, man. It's pretty common sense. Grow some courage, find, fight, you know, grow some balls, and just keep going, you know. And if you fail, that's okay. Get back up again. If yeah, we all have bad days, but then you, you, you know, you have a good day the next day. You go at it again. That's why now, you know, no offense, I don't coach everyone. I only, I, I only work with people that have got the right attitude, that have got good values, and they're committed. I, I won't waste my time working with people that are gonna be half-assed, because they're not gonna change, they're not gonna do it. I've seen it, you have, to have the, you have to have that character in you. And if you haven't got that in you, then then you, I think you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to do some praying and, and find some, some source of strength to change. Because I've realized some people are just not, they're not going to apply themselves, they don't have the right attitude and there's nothing you can really do for, to someone who doesn't want to apply themselves. You can't make them, you can't force them. That's, 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 that's not right. So fortunately, I had a lot of flaws growing up, but I always had the right attitude. I had the hunger, I had the guts and I did fail a lot and I wasn't naturally gifted at things like some people were, but I just kept going. I had that drive, I still got it. And that's how I've been able to succeed in many areas. Because I won't accept no for an answer. I will not let failure make me quit or a bad day or a bad month or depression. I'll get back up again and I'll work my ass off until I get it right. You know, hard, work, hard work is not a given, it's, it's a talent. Like I said yesterday, you can't go on Amazon and buy character. You can't go on eBay and say, I'm going to buy mental toughness today. You can't go and find it in these places. You, it's, you've got to find it in yourself. But I'll tell you what, subscribing to my YouTube channel, Jonathan, also known as Johnny Berber, you'll be able to grow some of that stuff or come into one of my events or get in my mentorship or um, you know, just getting around positive people. So you guys can do it if you really want to, but you've got to man up, you've got to toughen up in the right way and, and there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable and asking for help when you need it so it's about being balanced in my opinion being a man you've got to be strong but you've also got to be weak in the right way there's the right weakness of vulnerability which is admirable understandable human but you've also not got to be uh, a complete weakling because you ain't going to get anywhere like that in life you're actually going to be a danger to yourself by being so weak and being so lazy and stubborn. So hard work, toughness, weakness in the right way. And I'll give an example of weaknesses, asking for help when you need it and not suffering in silence and being alone. Speak to your parents if you've got mental health problems. Speak to a professional, get a mental, or speak to a good friend. And get down to events, and get off the internet, and, and things will improve. David Goggins is a good person to listen to. He has got a similar story to me in terms of what he went through, the pain, uh, the low self-esteem and how he transformed himself. And, you know, he had to toughen himself up. I had to toughen myself up because I was too weak, too soft at a certain point. And I, and I didn't know I was until I got around um, mentors you know, and stronger people. And, and, and they told me, you know, they told me directly straight or they told me, you know, some had more of a... Um, a softer approach but the message got home I realized I'm too weak I'm too soft I'm too timid I've got to toughen up I'm not gonna get nowhere like this I'm not gonna excel in life uh, and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you become a bad person you become a good person but a strong person I mean, you can't help anybody if you can't help yourself running out of water here. hold on a sec sorry that's gonna get that <laughs> 
nicely doing these. Just a second, guys. That's the thing today of a lot of the guys in this self-help movements, you know, they're too logical. They like their, their logic's failing them because they're trying to use logic and apply logic in an environment where logic doesn't work. Logic doesn't work with fear. It's not logical. It's, it's mental, emotional and spiritual. It's, it's inside. It's this courage. You know, logic works with maths and adding up and maybe building software. That's where it works. Fair enough. That's the tool you need. But logic doesn't work with getting over fear. You've got to use bottle and courage. And you could be an idiot in the sense of having no education, no academic education, not read a book in your life. But if you've got a lot of bottle and courage and heart, you're going to be successful in life because that's what it takes. That's the substance that you need. You know, it's, it's, you can watch all these videos, you can read the books, you can download the ebooks, you can read the tweets and the comments and all that stuff. But if you haven't got the bottle, if you can't access your courage, Ain't gonna, it doesn't mean squat, it ain't gonna change. So I can only do so much for you guys on this live stream. Um, I, can't, I can't wipe your backside for you. You've gotta do that. You've gotta, you've gotta find it within yourself and bring it out and then you're gonna be proud of yourself, you know? And some of you are not gonna like hearing this. Okay, it doesn't offend me, I understand. Um, I didn't really like hearing it at a certain point when I was younger until I realized the value of it and what people were trying to help me and trying to say and trying to steer me in, in the right direction. Yeah, you've got to get ego out of the way, you've got to stop being prideful too much and this whole thing about I don't want to fail, I don't want to look bad, well you're not going to get nowhere then. If you're not, if you're not going to fail, you're not going to get nowhere. If you're not going to go through periods where it ain't going to work out, you're going to feel a little bit awkward in bed, but you're not going to get nowhere. I'm just being straight. I can't, I can't sit here and talk and talk bollocks and talk crap just to get likes. I'm, I don't care about that. I gotta tell the truth and what's gonna change people's lives and what works. And if people don't wanna hear it, then they don't wanna hear it. It doesn't, no skin off my nose. But the right people will appreciate it. They will hear it and they will act on the information. You've got to find courage and you do it one step at a time. I'm not telling you to climb Mount Everest today, but what I'm asking you to do is just walk up a little bit of Mount Everest just to get some courage and guts and then you can build on that and then you can have a rest. You can climb a bit more of the mountain. That will get easier. And then you can climb, climb the rest of it until you fully get up the mountain. So this is the way I would teach a guy to get over his fears of talking to women. If he was paralyzed, I wouldn't make him have a long conversation. I wouldn't expect him to get a number or a date straight away. I would just say, can you just say hello and walk off? Hi, how are you? Nice day. Even if you're nervous and you're a bit awkward and stuttery, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Just say hi, how are you? Have a nice day, make a woman's day. That, just get him to do that to start with. Just to give him some courage in a field of pro progression. Then calm him down, say, right, you've done that, well done, great. Should we have another go at it and say hello again and, and maybe this time add a few more words on? Can you guys understand? Can you understand the process? It's pretty straightforward. You don't need all these sophisticated books and all this logic. You actually need to get rid of it. I've worked with all different types of interesting clients and I've had some clients that are challenging in the sense that they've read all these books. They're coming from a very logical perspective, right? And there's so much knowledge that they've got and logic and maths and science and degrees that they're not able to do something so simple like say, go up and say hello to a person, introduce themselves. It's quite simple. Now, I'm appreciative that under the circumstances, it's challenging because you're nervous, yes. But in actuality, how hard is it to say to someone, I'm a bit nervous, nice to meet you, my name's Jonathan, what's your name? Or, or you look nice, I just want to say you look lovely. Like, how hard is it to do that? It's not hard. But you don't need logic and books and, and, and methods and, and, and maths and science uh, to do that. You, you need a little bit of the good stuff inside, what the real men had of yesterday and a couple of them today. You need courage, you need to apply yourself. It's simple, you don't need all that logic. 
you need logic for the school classroom and to pass exams, yes. But that's not the classroom that we're in at the moment. That's not what you want to achieve. So people always say, what books have you read? It's bollocks, it's what action have you taken? Because you, reading books don't make you successful. Reading books doesn't make you a man. It, if you're not taking action, you're just, you're just a coward who has book knowledge. It doesn't work, it really doesn't. I've got no time for it. Now, if you like reading books because that's your hobby, there's nothing wrong with that, right? I like good stories. I'm actually a good writer. I could write loads of good books. That's just like your, your, um, your hobby and what you enjoy. I haven't got a problem with that. But when you're telling me that you're reading books to find a solution to a problem that does not require book knowledge, it requires heart knowledge, guts, courage. You're doing the wrong thing. You're doing it all wrong. You know, I built a successful business. I didn't read one book on business. I didn't need it. It was bollocks. I knew I didn't need it. I didn't need to go to university to build a business. I, I had the intuition. I had the common sense. And I went out and I kept trying and I succeeded. Common sense. How do you run a business? You find the market. You develop a skill. You solve the problem on the market, right? That's like the basics that you give value. You offer value, right? First little lesson in business. The second lesson, you learn to sell. I don't do all the tricks. I'm not into lying and tricking. I need to you be honest with people. You grow some courage. You go to business meetings. How can I help you? What is your problem? Well, my problem is this. I have this problem. Right, I can, I can solve your problem for you. I can help you. You're right. Okay, great. How much is it? This is how much the program costs. This is the time. This is the date we'll start. Can you do it? Yes, we can. Great, we shake on it. Payment's done. Simple, man. It's not that hard. You don't need all this bollocks, all this hundred steps to influence people and get and, and sell. It's, it's, it's crap. You don't need it. It's simple once you can face your fear in most things in life. But it takes guts. It takes courage. Sick of the bullshit, man. I'm sick of these people that just talk crap. They want to come out with all these theories and that. And they're not living it. They're not doing it. The amount of people that said to me, all these smart asses that were wrong and just jealous, oh, you should read this book, Johnny. You, but where did they end up? Where did I end up? So I'm just getting things out. They didn't build a successful business. I did. Why? Because I didn't listen to their advice, which come from, uh, it come from basically no truth, no experience, just theory. What they read, which is what someone else wrote from their experience, what did you write? All these people that love coming at you with the books they read. Why don't you write a book? You can't write a book because you've got nothing to speak about because you didn't take shit. You didn't take no action. I can't listen to that. So that's why I'm straight with you guys. I'm telling you, I want to help you. I want to change your life. You can't read books to face social anxiety or build a business unless you face loads of fears and then you read some things on, you know, maybe some strategies of business and then I can live with that. In, in that sense. But most of it is you don't need to read a book. Deep down people know it, but society has conditioned people to believe that reading a book makes you more valuable than someone who didn't read a book. Bollocks, I call, I call it for what it is, it's bullshit. Uh, Dan Pena said the same, uh, and I value his opinion. He's a self-made billionaire and he's helped a lot of people and he said, he said the books is bullshit. The guys have got to get out of there and stop being little cowards, snowflakes, and they've got to take action and face the fears and get comfortable being uncomfortable. Same thing I'm saying. David Goggins said the same thing. David Goggins says people are looking for words in a book and it's not found in there. It's found through suffering and growing and getting uncomfortable. I've never met a man who was successful and took out a lot of action, who ever said to me, oh, what book did you read? I read, they don't say that because they just live it and do it, you know? Oh man, this generation, man. People are asleep, man. It's hard to get through to them. You try and help them. You, you give them everything and they just don't get it. They don't, they're just brainwashed. But you know what? I enjoy this. <laughs> I like the challenge of it. 
I know a lot of people, they don't want to hear it because it's too challenging. They want to hear mundane things. They want to hear, today I went, I went and uh, watched Netflix and I went on Instagram. They want to hear mundane surface drama bullshit because people, people can get out of facing their own crap. <laughs> it's making me laugh, man. I can, I can imagine the days of me being in the gym sparring and saying to my trainer, oh, hold on, hold on. I just want to finish a couple of pages out of this book. <laughs> What's, ain't going to do nothing. He's going to say to me, mate, can you just get the fuck in the gym get, and put your gum shield in and your thing and, and start sparring? Oh, boy. All right, we're going to finish up soon, guys. It's been an hour. <laughs> Anyway, man, I appreciate the people that are going to take this information and they're going to use it wisely. <laughs> what books have you read, man? What action have you taken, man? What, what terrifying fear have you faced? That's what I want to hear. Anyone can read a book, man. Anyway, guys, I'll be writing my new book tomorrow. <laughs> I've got a new book coming out. But my granddad was part of a generation that had to fight. Oh, I loved it. Let me read this. I really appreciate that. That sounds like something worth reading. My granddad was part of a generation that had to fight at 17 years old. He was a man at 18. And if he didn't have money, he'd make it. Now, I really massive respect for your granddad and the great men of your granddad's era. Those were the real men. And to be quite frankly, they put most of the men today to shame. Yeah, that's really the truth of the matter. But hopefully, you know, on a positive note, things are slowly changing. The question you really want to ask yourself is, why have so many other men succeeded at this? Why can't you do it? That's what I used to always ask myself when I was failing. And when you really do that, you get the answers in your own way. And, you know, I mean, for me, it was like, yeah, why, why, why ain't I doing it? If they can do it, I can do it. You know, they, they take a piss, they take a shit, they're human. They're not, they don't have 10 arms and 10 legs. We, we may have had different upbringings and we might think of it different, but they're human beings, we're, we're the same. So why am I doing it? Because I'm, I'm letting fear hold me back. I'm not believing in myself. Right, let's do it. And then you do it and then you, and then you succeed and realize, oh, I've done it, I can do it. I'm no different to anybody else. going to finish up guys probably on the 60 minute mark it's been an intense one today enjoyed it it's been great I appreciate you guys coming on and I hope that even if two people are going to go and take action on their fears and I've done my job or even one I really do the best I can to, to unpeel my mentality and to give it over and, and try and make it rub off on some of you so you can toughen up your mindset and, you know, and um, approach fear in a different way. Yeah, I think that's what's happened today, man. This internet is softened. It's made this generation soft of men. It's too much of a luxury um, to the point where people don't want to get off their backside anymore. I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people, they're just happy to sit at home, and be couch potatoes and just be on the internet all day. And I, I won't live like that. That's why I go out and face things and meet people and help people and grow and you know, go down the gym, just not live your life just on this thing because it's not healthy.
Um, it's, it's fun when you have a little bit of time on it and it's great for, you know, you can build a business on it, but it's not something that you want to make your whole life about. And that's what I believe is, it's not the only cause. Obviously, there's a lot of negative forces out there, but it's playing a big part in weakening this generation of men because the old school men, like you said, like your granddad, they were not, there was no internet then. They had to get out and get off their ass and work on a farm, work hard and, and do practical things. And that's what a man needs to do to become a man. He needs to do practical things. Of course, logic has its place and it's good to be intelligent, but you need a bit more than that. You need to graft, you need to work hard, you need to feel like you know, you're know adding value to society, you need to contribute, you need things to build. But the mentality of a lot of the men today is they just, I don't know what the right word is, but it's definitely, um, they're, just, they're just weak, man. And that's why, like, any, any person who's brave, like myself or anyone, they make you a superstar when really we're not superstars. We're just being, you know, what man really should be. But you look like a superstar because you're so different to the majority of men who are cowards, who are not being accountable. They're not trying. They're not working hard. It's, it's sad, man. It, really, it's, it is sad. It is sad. It is affects, affects everyone. It does affect everyone. And we're not saying that you've got to be Superman because there's nothing wrong with a man crying. Because I cry, we all cry from time to time. I'm not saying you can't cry. I'm not saying you can't be emotional and you can't show weakness. You can, but you have to have the toughness as well. You have to have the grit that you were talking about that your granddad had, you know. You have to have some courage, otherwise you're going to be weak. And you can't really help other people. Like I, I couldn't help anybody if I weren't courageous and didn't face my fear on a daily basis. How can I help anyone? Because I just would be worried all the time and it's, it's kind of selfish to be so afraid because you're just absorbed in yourself. You're not thinking, well, I'm a bit afraid, but how can I go the extra mile to help someone else who probably needs to help a bit more than I do? You know, the values, mindset, the, the, the morals today, the values, I don't know what's going on, man. The world is uh, upside down. Now, I come from the generation of men where if you saw, if you see a lady struggling with luggage, you help her. You say, "Do you need some help with that?" But today, I reckon the majority of the men they just walk past, probably too scared to even say to a lady, "Can I just help you with your luggage?" Or you know, if she's got a pram or a child or she's struggling. That's just like a no-brainer. But today, that's probably a lot to ask for. Yeah, man. You know, we're kind of living in, in a society that is beating men to the ground and, you know, making them feel ashamed for being who God's made us to be. You know, masculine men, crazy, crazy stuff. I'm not the only one. There's so many people talking about it now, but I do believe there is a positive change. It sounds like I'm ranting and I am a bit, but it's because, you know, we want things to get better for everyone. Anyway, finished. Appreciate <laughs> Appreciate you coming on. I'm sure you guys will get a lot out of this. I've given you examples and I've given you the best that I can give you today. And I'm proud of myself for doing that. And I appreciate all of you coming on. And I, I am patient. I do believe a lot more people are going to change. So hope you guys enjoyed it. My upcoming events, we've got the free fillers event on the 17th. And then we've got the paid weekend program on the 23rd and the 24th whereas we go out for a weekend and I help you out to get over your social anxiety of talking and meeting women in an honest, ethical, respectful, confident manner. So just give me a shout, give me an email if you want coaching or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching. And uh, please go and apply this, you know. Just start a little bit at a time and you guys will get there. You'll do great, all right? Pleasure. Speak to you soon.